Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to the River Istanbul Church. Can you stand up, please? We are very glad to have you this morning. We say welcome to those who are watching through internet. We choose to worship this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We want to focus on Jesus Christ. And we want his presence to be tangible this morning in our lives. Hallelujah. Are you ready to praise? Yes. My morning to dancing, I can smile again, cause I have a joy, oh, let the celebration begin, make a joyful noise out to him, come on everybody, let's give him praise for his good, you have given me a joy. Morning to dancing, I can smile again, cause I have a choice. Oh, let the celebration begin, make a joyful noise out to him. Come on, everybody, let's give him praise for his good. You have given me a choice. You turn my sorrow into joy And now I'm singing and I'm dancing And I will shout for joy Your turn! You turn my sadness into gladness You turn my sorrow into joy And now I'm singing and I'm dancing And I will shout for joy Your turn! You turn my sadness into me a joy that won't stop and will never live it so I will praise you with gladness for you are good you have you have given me a joy I won't stop and will never live it so I will praise you with gladness for you are good Give him praise because Hallelujah. he is good. How God is good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are God and we lift you up. 
keep singing, we keep praising, we won't stop giving all we got. Cause you're worthy of all glory, oh, there is no other, you are forever, Lord of all. There's nobody like you, no one beside you. Every night and day and with no delay, let hellless press resound. For the sun, your glory eternal never stops. Giving all we got, creation keeps singing. Oh, there is no other, you are forever. Lord of the wrong, there's nobody like you, no one beside you. Everything you've done, 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 we give you all the praise. Every night and day, and with no delay, let endless prayers resound. Go! Hallelujah! 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 We give you praise. Thank you, Jesus, because you are alive. Hallelujah.
Jesus, give him praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Are you so happy to be here this morning? Yes. To praise and, and glorify an everlasting God. Amen. Are you not just happy that God does not grow weary? I'm one of the happiest people because I don't know where I'd be if he did. <laughs> Thank God he doesn't. Amen. Well, it's great to see you all here this Sunday morning. A very warm welcome to you here in the sanctuary and also those that are watching us by way of the internet as well. I can tell you're ready to go around and uh, meet someone you have not met before. Ask them how their week was. Tell them how glad you are to see them here. Amazing. Thank you. Thank you for helping me extend my regards to the person sitting next to you. Well, it's great to see you all here. I know that all of you came expecting and ready to receive what God has this morning. Amen. Uh, again, this is the river at Istanbul Church. We are glad to have you here this morning. We also want to welcome those that are watching us by way of the internet as well. We are glad that you are able to make it to worship with us this morning. Just before I go any further, I would like to let us all know that we need to turn off our cellular phones. Um, I know that you, you will tell me that you need to read your Bible. Yeah, I know that. But just make sure it's in a mode that's not going to distract the person sitting next to you, right? And of course, we also want to honor the Holy Ghost, so it's important for us to do this. And I also want to uh, bring to your notice that you cannot chew gum in the sanctuary. And in case you came in chewing, do not stick it in the wrong place. Put it in the right place. I know you're a very obedient bunch. I know you will do what you're asked to do. And thank you for that. And you can also not bring uh, drinks into the sanctuary uh, with the exception of water, of course. Is there anyone here for the very first time? If it's your very first time on a Sunday morning, we would like to recognize you. Would you please raise your hand? We want to let you know how glad we are that you came to worship with us here this morning. If it's your very first day on a Sunday morning to worship with us, I think I see a new face here. But I just don't know why he's not going to lift his hand. Thank you. We're glad to have you. Um, I think I see another hand at the back there as well. Thank you for making it to be uh, to worship with us this morning. I also want to welcome those that are watching us by way of the internet as well. For the very first time, uh, I know that you will have a wonderful time in the presence of God. So our ushers have a gift bag for you. And inside that gift bag is a guest information card. Please do fill it up. And give it back to the usher that gave it to you at the end of the service. Um, our website is riveristanbul.com. We have our services streaming live. Uh, on Sunday at 11 a.m., the service is actually live right now. So you can ask your friends and relatives. And of course, also on Wednesday at 7.30 p.m. Uh, of course, with the exception of the fact that if it's a fellowship night, then we do not have a stream. But if... It's not a fellowship night, then you can ask your friends and relatives who live outside of Istanbul to join us. Of course, if they live in Istanbul, what do you do? You make sure you find a way to bring them here, whichever way you have to do it. You can also follow us on Facebook, on Instagram, and on YouTube as well. After the service, on my right-hand side right here, the River of Life Discipleship class will be taking place. This is a 12-module class, which basically takes three months because it happens only on Sundays. And this is a place where you get to understand what it means to make Christ the Lord of your life. Basically, the fundamental, uh, the fundamental principles you need to know to walk in the faith. Amen? The, 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 you know those basic things and the most important things that make that foundation that you really, really need. So if you just newly gave your life to Christ or if you just newly joined this church family, please do make a point of joining Tamar and her team. And I guarantee you that the principles you are going to be taught will carry you through the storms of life. Amen? They will cause you to leave 
as an overcomer because that is the will of God for your life. Amen? So it's important for you. Also, if you have started the classes, it's important for you to also make sure you finish them. I keep saying every single time, it is not how you start, it is how strong you finish that counts. So it's important for you to, and of course, there's that part where you get to get the certificate, huh? That's cool, right? It's, it's a good thing to know that you started something and finished it and you received a reward for it. So even if uh, you do not have any other motivation, you'll understand the change it did in you after you get the certificate. No, I'm just kidding. But you, you will experience the change, of course, as you go through the classes. Um, oh, this is just my, that place, you know. If you're interested in becoming a member of this splendid, amazing, superb, beautiful, uh, this is home, basically. If you want to become a part of this family, if you feel like you do not, you do not have a place where you can call home, this is the right place for you. Uh, schedule an appointment with Pastor Godwill if you're interested in joining this family. Of course, you get to understand why the Lord has placed this ministry here the vision and the mission of this ministry, what basically this place is here to do in Istanbul. And uh, you also get to understand what your duties are. You also get to understand what your responsibilities are. But most importantly, you have a place to call home and a place to plug in your gifts while you wait for the Lord to lead you to the next step of your life. I also want to bring to your notice that there will be a church membership class taking place on the 13th of March at 7 p.m. at the office or rather the headquarters, which is in Nakia Elgin Street, Block 56, and it's on the second floor. If you would like to become a member and you want it to be a part of this class, would you kindly register your name with Tamar at the end of the service? I'm sure she will be of help to you, and she will keep in touch with you uh, to let you know the details of how you can uh, get to the headquarters also to be a part of the class as well. Our prayer room is every Monday from 2 to 4 p.m., and every... Wednesday from 2 to 5 p.m. Uh, this also takes place in the headquarters. I repeat, it's in Nakia Elgin Street, Block 56, and it's on the second floor. Do make a point of being there. It's important for you to also, as you press into the Lord and also pray for the needs of other people, you're investing in something that is bigger than yourself. And guess what? You're investing in the kingdom of God. So what happens when you make God's business your business? He makes your business his business. Amen? So it's... it's uh, it's important, and of course, that, sh that will definitely be the turning point of your life. So this coming Tuesday, uh, right here in the sanctuary, there is going to be the Kingdom Business Fellowship. This is uh, basically a time of teaching to people that feel like they are called into the business place, or people that would actually like to be raised to become leaders. Like Pastor Godwell always says, you raise the businessman that will ultimately... Uh, develop the business. So it's important that if you know any friends in town that are businessmen out there or people that basically are in the marketplace, this is important for them to attend. So this Tuesday at 7.30 p.m. right here in the sanctuary, uh, just make sure you bring as many people as you can, of course. And you might say, I feel like in the future I might be joining the marketplace. You're welcome to also come. And every Wednesday at 7.30 p.m. right here in the sanctuary is our Holy Ghost service. This is, my goodness, after the, the, the last time we had in the revival, you don't want to miss any of this because the big thing has started happening already. <laughs> you want to be a part of it. So just make sure you bring as many people as you can. Of course, you do not want to come alone. Our prayer meeting is every Thursday at 7.30 p.m. right here in the sanctuary as well. This is a time where we just come to pray all together and to strengthen ourselves as we pray together. Amen. So it's important for us to also come, make time, because uh, it also is life-changing. We get to also receive teachings on prayer, and you do not want to miss that as well. Um, students in the house, where are you? Are you excited about the upcoming conference? My goodness. I think, okay, great. I see you are. So the International Students Conference is coming up very soon, and I would like all students to raise their hands because we would like to pass out flyers so that you can share them at your school. Students, excuse me, I know all of you. Why aren't you raising your hands? <laughs> okay, you don't want to let your friends know that there's a conference here that is going to be so life-changing. Oh, okay, I see. So if, if any of the students has not received a flyer yet, 
Do you make a point of seeing any one of the ushers and they will give you the flyer. I guess some of you have them already and I, I see that. But if there is any student that hasn't received a flyer yet, please do make a point of getting some of those from the ushers. And of course, you're sharing this with your friends because it's, it's going to be a fantastic time right here. You do not want any of them to miss out on this. There's going to be some exciting topics that will be handled here. I will not let the cat out of the bag. If you want to know, you need to come. Um, and it's going to take place from March the 5th to the 9th at 6 p.m. every night. But of course, on Wednesday the 7th, we're going to start at 4 p.m. Because we need to finish on time so that we can also uh, get into the midweek service as well. Last but not the least, if you would like to be... If you would like to join any of the areas of the Ministry of Helps, if you would like to join the soundboard and the media guys back there, do please see Eben. If you would like to join the worship team, do see Pastor Godwell. If you would like to join the kids' ministry, in the meantime, you see Jennifer. If you would like to join any other area of the Ministry of Helps, please do see uh, Tamar, and she will let you know how you can get yourself plugged into that. And if you would like to join the Ministry of Mercy, just make sure you get in touch with Pastor Priscilla and she will let you know how you can get serving in that area as well. Are we all ready for what God is about to do here this morning? Amen. Amen. Why don't we all jump back up on our feet as the worship team comes over? Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your hands to the Lord and let's take one minute to worship. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for your awesome presence in this place, Lord. We thank you. We give you all the glory, all the honor. Thank you, Jesus. Be lifted higher, be lifted higher. 
Thank you, Lord, for the grace. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity that we can all come together in unity. That we can all look on your face. For your word says, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Our eyes are fixed upon you this morning. We thank you, Lord, for all that you did this past week. But Lord, we thank you for all that you're going to do in our lives this week. We are so grateful. We are so thankful. We exalt your wonderful name in this place. We welcome the Holy Spirit to come and do whatever he desires. We will not stop you. We will not hinder you. May your will be done. May your plan be established in every life. We thank you, Lord God Almighty. Hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name. And everyone say amen. amen. Well, are you glad to be here this morning? Yes. Guys, I can't hear myself well. Please, can you give me some more volume on the monitors, please? We want to say welcome to everyone that is coming to this place. This is the river at Istanbul Church. We also want to welcome those watching by way of the World Wide Web. We are so glad that you've joined us. Amen. How many of you have come expecting? Amen. How many of you know that God has a lot in store for you today? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. The Lord is good. I want you to go out of your way. I want you to do, do it this way. I want you to meet with someone you never met with. And I want you to let them know you're glad to see them in the house of God today. Go out of your way and meet with someone you do not know. Someone you've never met with. Introduce yourself to them. Ask them a couple of questions. Like, how are you doing? What is your name? Where are you from? We welcome everyone to our Sunday morning service here at the river. The Bible says how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Amen. And uh, there's unity here this morning. And the Bible says where there is unity, there is the anointing. And the Bible says where there is unity, God releases his blessing. So if we are united today, there's the blessing of God that's going to be released upon us in an unprecedented fashion. Amen. You know, in Acts chapter 2, the Bible says that we're all together in one place. 
all together, speaking of unity, in one place, unity. And what happened? It says suddenly. Everyone says suddenly. Yeah. Uh, I, believe, I believe God for suddenlies today. Amen. There, are su- there are suddenlies of God. Amen. <laughs> I'm, I'm even beginning to feel the suddenlies of God already. <laughs> Hallelujah. They were, all <laughs> they were all together in one place. I want to say together, together. In, one place. in one place. That signifies unity. All together in one place. All together, all together. Purpose, vision. They were all looking to one thing. They all had the same vision. They all had the same purpose. Jesus had told them in Acts chapter 1, He says, Go and wait for the promise of the Father. For you've heard me say, You've heard me talk about the promise of the Father. So go and wait for the promise of the Father to be released upon you. And so they got together at the upper room in Acts chapter 2. And the Bible says in Acts chapter 2 from verse 1, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all together in one place. Amen. Amen. Are we all together here this morning? Amen. In one place. United in purpose, right? United in vision. Looking unto Jesus all together. And the Bible says, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven. (laughs) Amen. Out of a mighty rushing wind. And it filled the house. Everyone say, it filled the house. house. When we are united today, the Holy Spirit is going to fill this house. Amen. Amen. (laughs) And and he filled the house where they were in. Right? And uh, they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. All of them, 120 of them. Not one person was left out. All of them filled. So I believe that uh, everyone that has come into this place this morning can be filled. Amen. Amen. Not not one person should leave this place the same way as you came. Amen. Amen. Whatever it is you've come for, just understand that the Lord is here to meet you. Not, Not at the point of your need. A lot of people say the Lord will meet me at the point of my need. But my Bible tells me that God will do exceeding abundantly above. Not, not at the point of your need, but exceeding abundantly above all that you can ask or think. I'm still ringing. If you guys would do something about this, please. Uh-huh. Uh, the Lord will do exceeding abundantly above all that you can ask or think according. Everyone say according. According, according to the power that is at work within you. Amen. 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 So this morning, I believe there is big power working. In this place, big power walking on the inside of each of us. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. There's a lot of things lined up today. A lot of things that will bless you. And I want you to open up your hearts and just expect the Lord to touch you. Amen. Sometime in the service, the Lord will touch somebody. Amen. Amen. A few people said amen. And so it seems like that word was for a few people. I said, sometime in the service, the Lord's going to touch somebody. Amen. You can take it or you can leave it. You can, you, can, you, can partic- you can spectate or you can participate. It's up to you. What have you come to do? Have you come to participate? A uh, few people. Have you come to spectate? Yes. <laughs> Wake up. If you're still sleeping, wake up. I apologize. I can't, I can't offer you black coffee this morning. But uh, I, can, I can tell someone sitting close to you to help me. To help me give you a nudge. Do this to your neighbor. Do this to your neighbor. Wake up. Wake up. Give them a nudge. Give a nudge. Give a nudge. Wake up. Wake up. It's time to wake up. You are in church right now. You are not on your bed. Wake up right now. I command you to wake up in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Oh, you know, you can actually say this to your neighbor. You can say neighbor. I've come to receive from God today. So if you find me sleeping, please smack me up the side of the head. (laughs) 
Did you tell him to smack you up the side of the head? <laughs> so you, you better don't sleep. You better stay awake. Or else somebody's going to smack you up the side of the head. So I deputize you to smack your neighbor up the side of the head if you find them sleeping. No, that was a joke. <laughs> Don't smack anybody. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Well, you know, the Holy Ghost might smack some people here today. So uh, <laughs> I do like the smackings of the Holy Ghost. Amen. If it smacks you, you wake up. The Bible says, let those that are sleeping wake up. Those that are sleeping in Zion, you wake up. And so the Holy Ghost will come and smack some people up and wake them up if they fall asleep, you know. And I like that. So Holy Spirit, I welcome you. Smack anybody. <laughs> Whoever needs smacking, Holy Ghost smack them. <laughs> we all need smacking. Come on. Don't look religious now. Okay? It's not a bad thing if the Holy Ghost smacks you. Okay? If the Holy Ghost smacks you, it, it will change your whole life. One touch from him, you'll never be the same again. <laughs> I say one touch from him, you'll never be the same again. Amen. So this morning, we are open to the smackings of the Spirit. We are open to the Holy Ghost coming to shake us up and, and uh, put us over there where God wants us to be. Amen. Amen. That is if you're not there. Amen. <laughs> the Lord is good. Okay, let's go ahead and do this. Um, I know we're going to have more people coming. Can I have my notes, please? Thank you. I know we're going to have more people coming later. Uh, some people come to church late, uh, but they expect God to be on time. But anyways, let's just move right, right along. Um, let's see here. There are two things I want to do at the end of the service. And so I'm going to ask everyone to please wait. Do not leave at the end of the service. When I say, oh, love you, God bless you, we turn down the broadcast. I want everyone to please stay back. There are two important things that we are going to do today before we finally release everyone to go, please. And so if I do not say this again in the service, when those that will be late come in, when they sit near, you just tell them. The pastor said he wants everyone to wait <laughs> after the service, okay, because there are two important things that we would like to do when the service is over. Can someone say amen? amen. Do we have our outreach testimonies ready? Can we come up and please let's do that? And also, let's also roll that video clip uh, for the all Af uh, sorry for this university student conference that starts next week. And even as we roll that video clip, uh, I want Pam to please come up again and just talk a little bit about uh, the conference that's coming up for students, university students. Hey, while I'm speaking, can you guys come? Please come while I'm speaking. I just called you guys to come. Don't sit there while I'm come. And talk about this, okay? And when they finish with the outreach testimony, and then we can roll that video. And then Pam will come and speak a little bit about uh, the university student conference. Go ahead. Okay, thank you. Amen. Uh, so last week we reached 64 people and 25 of them accepted the life of Christ. Uh, just before I let you know what's coming up this week, we'll take a few testimonies. Amen. Amen. So, <clears throat> last night I spoke with... <laughs> <laughs> last night I spoke with... <laughs> I spoke with three Muslims and one prayed. So, the people are hungry. They are hungry. They are <laughs> so... So, it's... Uh, it's not you, it's, it's the spirit. So even when, when you're talking with them, you feel, you feel that talking, you feel that pull, that pull, that pull like going to their hearts and pulling. And even, even though they are hesitating, you, you, you're like sure, like you know, be, you know beyond the shadow of a doubt that even if they don't say it at that time, they are definitely going to be caught, like the fish is definitely going to come into the kingdom. Uh, I was uh, going for outreach with Tatiana, and we spoke to, there were about four guys, and three of them said the prayer of salvation, and there was one guy who he was really uh, excited, 
and he asked us to pray for him. And and uh, <laughs> uh, what is that? I encourage everyone if you can go talk to people because yeah, everyone can. I'm I'm nervous to talk to people who I don't know, but. I know that it's not me talking to, to them, but it's uh, through the spirit, and it's just through me. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, hallelujah. Thank God, Jesus. Okay, this week... <laughs> sorry. And this week, I spoke to three people, and two of them prayed the prayer of salvation. And uh, the two people... the. Two people pray the prayer of salvation. There is one that I was like praying for that person. Every time I was speaking to that person that I want to pray for you. And she was like, uh, not today. Because, you know, I just come to do something, but we cannot talk today. <laughs> we, cannot <laughs> we cannot talk today. And it was every time. I can say like one and a half year. And I was every day, like not yet, yeah, every day. Every time when I want to speak to her, she was like, no, no, not today. You know, today I'm not ready because I just come to drink beer and I cannot talk, <laughs> you know. And you, I know you will just, but this, this week, it was in the morning. It was in the morning when she called me and um, I, I start I, I start speak to her. She was telling me something and I, I, I said, oh, today is the day. I cannot miss t this day. And I, I start um, sharing with her the, the word of God. And after that, I pray with her the prayer of salvation. And that person is my mom. Yeah, so... <laughs> Thank, Thank God, Jesus. And uh, because it's some, something that I wanted really, really to do that because, <laughs> yeah, I thank God for her life and her salvation. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. <laughs> Amen. These people are just amazing, right? You don't actually need English to go out. You just need to go. I like the courage. I like the fact that they step out here, nervous as they are, and they say it. So it's, it's, uh, it's encouraging to me. I don't know about you guys, but it's really encouraging to me. So um, I also spoke to someone, and you know, I was thinking about the person I spoke to. It was, I did not actually know she was Kenyan. It was after I did that I got to realize. But the point is, when, when you give somebody a gift and they accept it, what do you feel? Very happy, right? You know, I was thinking, and God was speaking to me, this is exactly the same thing he feels. When we go out and speak to people, we're basically giving them a gift. And when they accept it, God is happy about it. But guess what? You also get to experience the joy that God feels. And I think that's actually the greatest part about outreach. And I think that's why it's important for all of us to step out. All of us can do it. It's we have been given a gift and all we do is give these people the gift that has been given to us. But we also experience the joy of God as these people experience. I, I mean, as these people accept it, we experience the same joy that God has when they come into the kingdom. Amen. It's important. It's actually a privilege to feel what God feels. Amen. So all, I encourage you guys to just step out. All you need to do is just go. When you talk to one person, it will amaze you that you just want to talk to somebody else and another person and another person because you're not actually the one that is doing it. The Holy Ghost in you is doing it. Amen? Amen. Whether they accept it or not, one and a half years is a very short time. Some people followed people for three solid years <laughs> before they came in. I'm telling you, but the point is you're sowing seed. You might not really know, but the seed will definitely grow. You might Somebody somewhere has been watering it, but guess what? You will reap the harvest from that seed that you have sown. Um, so this coming week on Monday at 7 p.m., there will be a team that will be going out to reach the lost. And um, they will be meeting at the headquarters. Of course, all the teams will be meeting at the headquarters, which is in Nakia Elgin Street, Block 56, and it's on the second floor. Please do make a point, like I always say, to be there 10 minutes to time so that you guys can get ready and organize yourselves also to go. So on Monday, our team will be going out. They, they go out at 7 p.m. Of course, you get there at about 6.50. And on Tuesday at 5 p.m., another team will also be going out to reach the lost to tell people basically about the love of Christ on the streets. And 
On Thursday at 5 p.m. again, there's another team that will be going out. I repeat, all of these teams meet at the headquarters, which is in Nakia Elgin Street, Block 56, and it's on the second floor. If you do not know how to get there, do kindly ask any of the church workers. They will tell you how to get there. And of course, on Saturday after Bible school, we have another team that is uh, going there. That will be 7 p.m. as well. And I would like to bring to your notice those that will be going to the Bakir Koi meeting on Tuesday at on Tuesday, do get in touch with Pastor Priscilla. She will let you know how you guys will get to go there together. Are we ready to step out and tell people and give the gift that has been given to us? Yes. Okay, God bless you as you do so. got to discover yourself you've got to understand that we are all made differently we are all unique means that we have unique gift things and abilities that God has given to each of us so I do not want to be like you but I don't want to be a copy of you I want to be the real me but to be the real me I've got to discover who I am and it is when I discover who I am that I can also discover the gifts that I possess if I discover the gifts that I possess that is when education comes now I believe that every knowledge is important whatever you learn in university it's obviously going to help you and I believe that as you go through university it helps to expand your capacity to understand life academics must be built around what your gifts are so over the years, I've seen students who struggle. Why? Because their parents told them to go study this. And then you become a lawyer and then you make your family important. You become a doctor, you make your family important. But you are dying in silence. It's not just about going through university. Because you can go through the four walls of a university. But the things that you should have to cause you to be successful in the real world, you may not get. You need to, as a Christian, I believe, you need to let the Lord show you what He wants you to do. And when the Lord shows you what He wants you to do, that that's what you build upon. Be the man, the woman that God wants you to be. Hallelujah. Can I see all the university students in the house today? Ah, oh, come on. <laughs> you can do that again. University students? Yeah. <laughs> I'm disappointed. Pastor Godwell can do it better than you guys. And you're young people, you have energy. University students? Yeah. So much better. Thank you for that. Okay. Well, basically, as we've been talking about the university students conference that's coming up from the 5th to the 9th of March, which is... Uh, in about two weeks or so, or a week, yeah, two weeks or so. And as Pasagoda was saying, it's not just about the four walls of the classroom or the university. You know, it goes beyond that. And that is what this conference is trying to achieve, to empower the students beyond what they're receiving within the lecture rooms or the classrooms. You know, because so many things that are going to be talked about here, you cannot get them inside the class. You cannot get a lecturer who's going to tell you about vision or maximizing your talent or breaking out of subculture or relationships. You will not get that at the university. And your life has to go beyond that. And maybe some of you are sitting here and you're studying a program that you don't even like. You're not passionate about. You're doing it because your mother said you need to go and study law or do medicine because we want our family to, you know, be on a higher status and say, okay, we have our daughter studying in Turkey and doing medicine, or I don't know, doc to be a doctor, or whatever it is that is, you know, of a higher status. But what is it that you want to do? What is it that you're passionate about? Or what is it that you would like to actually God to show you what is his plan and purpose for your life? And if you have all those questions running through your mind, or maybe you have a gift, a talent, and you actually don't know where to channel that gift or how to maximize that potential that you have. This is the conference for you. Or you want to know about relationships. Who said you have to graduate and be 30 and then you want to learn about relationships? It starts right now. Let's get away with the mentality that you have to <laughs> <laughs> grow up and get to a certain age because mostly where, we, where I come from in Africa, if I talk about relationships right now, it seems like it's a taboo. But we have to do away with that mentality. 
you know, it's a reality and we are a part of it. So let's start talking about it. Let's start preparing ourselves for it and not step into something. And then that's when you actually want to learn the basics about it. So this is what this conference is about, to empower us and to give us the necessary skills to be able to go through life as young people and as university students and make a difference for the upcoming generation. Amen. Absolutely. Yeah, awesome. And, and at, this, at this conference, one of the things that I will be speaking about is how to find God's vision for your life. And I shall be talking about the three stages of a vision. Every vision has three stages. And uh, I don't want to even go into that right now, but you need to be there. You need to tell your friends to be here. Because a lot of times people go through university, but they come out on the other side and they are still confused about life. They don't even know what to do with their lives. A lot of university graduates are just roaming around the streets of uh, different nations of the world, not really knowing what to do with themselves. You know, like just uh, what she was saying, really, which is what I said in our previous conference, a lot of people uh, have been talking, talked into studying a particular course at school, and then they go through that just to make their family proud. And then you come out on the other side, and you're all frustrated. And even though you've kind of brought your family to a place where society looks at your family now as, wow, now they have an engineer, now they have a medical doctor, now they have a lawyer, you know, and... and that might be good, but the question is, what about you? Are you happy about that? If everyone is a lawyer, who's going to be a painter? <laughs> and when I say painter, I don't mean painting houses. <laughs> you know? So everyone has a gift. And even with painting houses, there are people, there are people that do this thing, and they, they make a living doing it. Can someone say Amen. You know, but a, a lot of times, you know, people think that it is just about doing that prestigious, prestigious career. And here is what they tell you even when you come out of university, that you went to university to learn how to learn. You went to university to learn how to learn. Because the things that you face in the real world, you may not get when you are in university. You come out of university and the real world slaps you up the side of the head. And you realize that uh, all the things you studied in class... Yeah, we're good, and, but they, they were given to you to just help prepare you for the real life, for the real world. Are you listening to me? Yeah. So that's the reason why we need to get people into this. I'm going to be speaking about vision. We shall talk about relationships. We shall, we shall talk about um, stewardship. We shall talk about um, how to maximize your talents. Amen? And everyone has been gifted by God differently. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Everyone is created by God to accomplish and to achieve something important, not just for yourself, but for the kingdom of God and for humanity. Can someone say amen? amen. And I believe that people shall come through this conference realizing God's purpose for their lives, and uh, you'll never be the same again. So please tell people it's important from the 5th to the 9th, and it shall be a mind-changing conference. I believe that there's going to come a paradigm shift in the way people think. Amen. Any other thing? Well, I just, lastly, I just encourage uh, students who are here, make a point that you are going to attend. And as you come, make sure that you reach out to somebody else because it goes beyond you. You want somebody else also to receive and be touched. So also reach out to your friends, your university students. And also, even if you're not a university student, reach out to students that you know. There has to be a change in their lives. There has to be a difference in their lives. So reach out to them. Don't just keep this to yourself and say, okay, well, I'm not a university student. Besides, I'm old now. Reach out to the students that you know because we, we rely on you guys. When I'm saying, okay, I, I mean the, our older sisters and, and, and brothers, yeah. reach out to them, to the students that you know. You know, because if you sit here and say it's for university students, it doesn't concern me. So I will not go out and publicize it. So reach out to them and help us bring them here so that we can make a difference in their lives. Amen. And I also believe that one of the things that I will talk about is what real education is. Because uh, a lot of people think real education is going to university. And I am for university. I mean, I encourage people to go to university. But I'm going to be talking also about real education. What is real education? We're talking about something that will truly cause you to succeed in the real world. Amen. Amen. Are you listening to me? Yeah. So that is so important. Uh, we're going to be talking about that. And so I, I look forward to this. I'm so expecting because I believe that God is going to speak to people and God is going to change, 
people's lives. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 I said amen. amen. We have a video that we're also going to show, Pastor Corey's video. Please, I want you to roll that and uh, pay attention. Pastor Corey from West Palm Beach. <coughs> Hello, River Church. Pastor Corey here. I just want to record a quick greeting. I'm just doing this on my phone and I uh, just want to uh, just greet you guys and just uh, talk about last week. Man, uh, you know, I got back real late last night on Friday night and had to rest and of course back to work on Saturday and then we just had the sa Saturday night service and I got home and really felt I need to, uh, even if it's just a short greeting, I, want, I need to record this greeting and, and uh, just talk to you a little bit. Last week was uh, phenomenal, really amazing and uh, actually it was a very supernatural week. I mean it just seemed like it was just another week of meetings but uh, just a three night revival, but it wasn't. It was just so much more than that. And um, I just really felt the whole week in my spirit, something amazing was gonna happen, something big is about to happen. Uh, and then of course, then on Wednesday, Billy Graham went home to be with the Lord, the great evangelist, Billy Graham. Uh, but you know, there was a prophecy back in 2012 that, uh, that Billy Graham's death is gonna be a sign of the end time supernatural church rising up and really the just the culmination of the final move of God on earth. And so that was a very powerful, powerful, uh, uh, really awesome, powerful uh, prophecy. And I mean, it's amazing. I, the whole week I was feeling like something big is about to happen. But it, even more than that, I mean, it's not just really that, but something big is about to happen in Turkey, in Istanbul. And uh, may, maybe you guys think that I came to encourage you, but I'll be honest with you, you guys encouraged me just the way that, you know, uh, the condition of the church, the spiritual uh, state of the church, I mean, just was awesome seeing everybody and people are rising up, I'm telling you. And um, we're going to grow. Something really big is going to happen. We're going to really grow and, uh, and really just start rise up and become the Lord and disciple them. I feel like we're going to fill the whole city with home groups all over the place, houses of joy, and it's going to be, it's going to really grow and ex explode. I really feel it. And uh, it was amazing this last week. We broke all kinds of records. We had over 6,000 people watching on Facebook Live. It was really, uh, really, really amazing, really supernatural. And we had so many people touched. And I mean, the meetings themselves are packing up, but we had so many people we reached. Uh, and, and that was just unusual. And I just felt, you know, it's definitely a move of God, and and uh, again, I really believe uh, we're on the verge of some major breakthroughs. And uh, those of you that were there in the meetings, you heard me talk about it. If you weren't there, you need to go back and watch them. I got to see most of you, uh, a lot of you, this past week, but some of you never came out to the meetings. Well, I don't know what was going on, but anyways, it's amazing. And Pastor Galva will will talk to you more about uh, these things, but. Uh, get ready for something big is going to happen, and I'm really feeling that I want to come come in April. Uh, already started to plan it already, even today. And uh, but uh, you know, let me tell you something. This is how I felt. If it wasn't my 20th wedding anniversary this coming week, and if I didn't have plans with Pastor Rose, I was going to extend the meetings. I was going to stay and extend the meetings. That's really how I felt that we we're going to go to another level. But I feel something is going to happen. And we're going to see some major breakthroughs. So get ready, be expectant, be in prayer. And I hope to see you guys very soon again in April. And, uh, you know, uh, I'm telling you, I really feel it in my spirit. Okay, love you all. Bless you. Bye-bye. Hallelujah. Oh, Pastor Zama, welcome back. I, I'm sure you brought some goodies from Nigeria. <laughs> Amen. Well, let's also acknowledge everyone that's here for the very first time. I know Terry did when she did the announcement, but if this is your first time here at the river, can you please lift your hand? I want to personally acknowledge you. Thank you, sir. Welcome. Thank you, sir. Welcome. Thank you, sir. Welcome. It's good to have you again. It's good to have you, and it's good to have you again. I saw you last week. God bless you. What's your name, sir? Moses. Where are you from? From Congo. God bless you. Put your hands together for Moses from Congo. Where are you from, my friend? South Africa. South Africa. What's your name, please? Pardon? 
Mahawi. Awesome. Welcome. Put your hands together for him. I'm sorry. It's, sometimes it's hard for me to pronounce some names, but uh, bear with me. I told some people my name, and they said, what? Um, <laughs> uh, what's your name, please, sir? Pardon? Adam. Where are you from? From Ghana. Ghana. Welcome. Put your hands together for him from Ghana. Amen. And repeat, you were here last Sunday. What's the name again, please? Yes, welcome. Put your hands together for him. Welcome again. God bless you. Amen. Some people will come from America and they'll ask me, what's your name, Pastor? I said, my name is God Will. They say, what? <laughs> so my name is God Will. What? God Will. God Will. Amen. The will of God. <laughs> I want you to turn to your neighbor and introduce yourself to your neighbor. Say, tell him or her your name. My name is... <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Father, we thank you for your word. The Bible says the entrance of your word brings light and understanding to the simple. Your word is sharper than any two I just saw, piercing even to the dividing of the soul and the spirit, the bone and the marrow, and it's the discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Your word is a light unto my feet, a lamp unto my path. Lord, I thank you for you sent forth your word and healed them and delivered them from all their destruction. Lord, I pray this morning that your word will impact our hearts and your word will change us, that we will walk out of this place totally changed as a result of your word. Thank you, Lord, because you even said you're clean because of the word that you've heard. So, Father, may your word come and wash us clean today. May your word come and change us and take us to a whole new place. May your word renew our minds. May your word change the way we look at things. May our perspective change as a result of your word. We give you the glory and the honor and the praise this morning. In Jesus' mighty name, and everyone shout your loudest, amen. amen. As we receive our tithes and offering today, I want you to go with me to the book of Genesis chapter 26. Genesis chapter 26. Lately, since I came back from Poland, I've been speaking to you on the importance of trusting the Lord. The Bible says, trust the Lord with all your heart and do not lean onto your own understanding. Trusting God for provision is so important. Here in Genesis 26, we read from verse 1, it says, There was a famine in the land besides the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. And Isaac went to Abimelech, king of the Philistines in Gerar. Then the Lord appeared to him and said, Do not go down to Egypt. Live in the land of which I shall tell you. So we understand that Isaac's intention was to go down to Egypt. Now what does it mean to go down to Egypt? You've got to understand Egypt in the word and the Bible in prophetic term is symbolic to the world. Did you hear me? Egypt is symbolic to the world. Pharaoh is, in prophetic term is symbolic to Satan. Okay? And so what this means is Isaac, a man of covenant... A man who had a relationship with Almighty God, a man who had a relationship with Jehovah, was supposed to trust the Lord. Rather, he decided that he was going down to Egypt to do it like the world does it. Are you listening to me? When crisis come, when famine occurs, when the economy seems to be falling apart, what do you do? Do you resort to doing it like the world does it? Or do you trust the Lord completely? So here we see Isaac was about to go down to Egypt. But praise God because our God is a God who keeps his part of the deal. The Lord came to Isaac and said to him, do not go down to Egypt. How many of you know that God knows the motive of your heart? How many of you know that God knows what you are about to do even before you do it? God knows everything. And because God knows everything, and praise God that our God is a God who keeps his part of the deal. The Bible says that God is not a man to lie, nor the son of man, that he should change his mind. God will never change his mind regarding the things that he has spoken over your life. Did you hear what I just told you? 
So God will never change his mind regarding the things that he has declared over your life. Notice, the Bible does not say you can't leave God. The Bible says God will never leave you. God will never forsake you. But a lot of times, people will try to go do it their own way. But because you're a man or woman of covenant with Almighty God, God will come and step right into the middle of the decision that you're about to make. And then God will bring about a change. Can someone shout amen? amen. So, I want you to understand that God is obligated to help you. My God. I say God is obligated to help you. Amen. Yeah. I say God is obligated to help you. Amen. Our God is a good God. Our God is responsible. And so he comes to Isaac and he says to Isaac, do not go down to Egypt. In other words, do not do it like the world does it. Do not go about borrowing. Do not operate like the world wants you to operate. The Bible actually tells us to come out from the system of the world. The Bible says we are in the world, but we are not of the world. Are you listening to me? There is a system that is in operation in the world. And when you look at the system in the world, you will understand as you read your Bible that a system in the world is contrary to the system of the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God operates differently from the way the world operates. And as a believer, if you want to have success, you cannot operate based on the system of the world. You've got to operate based on the system of the kingdom of God. I want to say the kingdom of God. How many of you understand that you are now a member of the kingdom of God? The Bible says Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the Lord. Right? Having been made a curse for us. Is that correct? For curse is everyone that what? Hangs on the tree. That the what? Blessing of Abraham might come upon who? The Gentiles. And that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Amen. The way the kingdom of God operates is totally different from the way the world operates. Let me just tell you the world would operate on buying and selling. But the kingdom of God operates on what? Sowing and reaping. The world operates on buying and selling. The kingdom of God operates on sowing and reaping. When God made Adam the first man, notice God did not tell Adam to buy and sell. God said to man, I've given you the seed and the seed shall be to you food. Everyone said, the seed, the seed shall be, shall be my, food. my food. That's the way God designed it. The seed shall be to you food. What did God tell Adam to do? God told Adam to tend the garden. Is that right? The seed shall be to you food. Those who eat their seed will run out of seeds. And when you run out of seed, it will lead to poverty. Are you listening to me? Those who eat their seed will run out of seed. And when you run out of seed, it will lead to starvation. So when Isaac saw the situation of the predicament in the land, he decided that he would go to Egypt. Tell your neighbor, don't go to Egypt. And let's say it this way. Don't do it like the world does it. The way the world does it is totally different from the way God does it. Are you listening to me? My ways are higher than your ways. My thoughts are higher than your thoughts. In other words, God wants us to think higher. God wants us to think like He thinks. God wants us to see like He sees. God wants us to act like He acts. Can someone say amen? amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. And so when it comes to the subject of provision... We've got to trust the Lord to provide. But how do we show God that we trust Him? And how do we release our faith for provision? We release our faith for provision by sowing our seeds. Thank you for one amen in the back. Amen. We release our faith for provision by sowing seeds. Everyone say sowing seeds. Sowing seeds. 
This is so important. Amen. Amen. So the Lord comes to him and says, Do not go down to Egypt. In verse 2, the Lord said to him, Dwell in the land. Verse 3, Dwell in this land, and I will be with you. My God, that's all you need. Tell your neighbor, that's all you need. All you need is for God to be with you. Yeah. Amen. You know why? Because when God is with you, nobody can be against you. Amen. All you need is for God to be with you because when God is with you, you have wisdom. Amen. Oh, Jesus. Amen. All you need is for God to be with you because when God is with you, closed doors will open. Amen. <laughs> All you need is for God to be with you because when God is with you, when they say no to others, they'll say yes to you. Amen. Listen, people, all you need is for God. The Bible says, God said to him, I will be with you. Our God never fails. And when God is with you, you will never fail. Are you listening to me? Our God never fails. And when God is with you, you are guaranteed success. So God tells him, I will be with you. So God says to him, basically, I'm going to be your partner. Tell your neighbor, make God your partner. <laughs> I will, it says, I'll be with you and I will bless you. I'll be with you and I will bless you. Amen. I said, God says, I'll be with you and I will bless you. Amen. Can I tell someone here this morning that God says that he'll be with you and he'll bless you? Amen. So right now, God is telling Isaac what he will do. God says, I'll be with you. That's what you need. God says, I'll bless you. That's what you need. If God is with you, then God's going to bless you. Amen. Amen. A thousand people may be against you, but don't worry if God is with you. The whole nation may be against you, but don't worry when God is with you. Ah, you are majority. (laughs) <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. I remember one time they came to arrest the prophet Elisha. And the king had sent soldiers. They said, go bring Elisha. Elisha was up there on the mountain. And when the soldiers came, the servant of Elisha began to panic. And he was freaking out and running all over the place. Master, master, they've come to arrest us. Elisha said, don't worry. Elisha said, Lord, open his eyes. <laughs> open what? Yeah. Was he physically blind? Yeah. <laughs> you know, some people can see, but they don't see. <laughs> Their eyes are wide open, but they don't really see what God's saying. Yeah. Their eyes are wide open, but they don't see that God is with them. Yeah. Their physical eyes are wide open, but they don't really see that those that are for them are more than those that are against them. Amen. Oh, my God. Lord, open his eyes because he's blind. (laughs) You know, God needs to open some people's eyes this morning. That they might see what God has available to them. Not these eyes. You've been looking with these eyes since your mother gave birth to you. (laughs) It's time to look with the eyes of the spirit. It's time to see into the realm of the spirit. And when you see into the realm of the spirit, you will take possession of everything that God has laid up for you. The Bible says, how great is the goodness that you have laid up for them that love you. Do you love him? Great things are laid up for you. No wonder Paul prayed for the church in Ephesus in in Ephesians chapter 1 from verse 15. He prayed for them. He said that God would open the eyes of their spirits. Give them the spirit of wisdom and revelation that they may know what is the hope of God's calling, that they may know what is the riches of the inheritance that God has available to the same, that they may know the exceeding greatness of the power of God that is at work in and for those that believe. The same power that raised Christ from the dead can someone say amen? amen? The Lord came to Abraham after the Lord had left him. And the Lord say, said to Abraham, look, as far as you see, I give to you. Look. 
Lift up your eyes, people, and look. As far as you see, God gives you. Can someone say amen? amen? What are you seeing in the midst of all the economic crisis? What are you seeing in the midst of people losing their jobs? What are you seeing in the midst of companies closing down? What are you seeing in the midst of the economic crisis that struck the, that struck the, uh, uh, the global market since uh, 2007? What have you been seeing? Have you been seeing troubles? Have you been seeing lack? What have you been seeing? What you see you have. What you see you have, if you see poverty, that's what you're going to have. Even though the price has been paid, Jesus took poverty for you on the cross of Calvary. Amen. But if all you see is poverty, if all you see is, I cannot afford it. It is too expensive. If, if that's all you see, then it is too expensive. Then you cannot afford it. Because as a man thinketh, so is he. Praise the Lord. That's why sowing seeds, giving in faith, and tithing it stretches us. And it's also a release of our faith to trust God for provision. It's a release of our faith to trust God for provision. I can stand here this morning and I can tell you that most people in the world are in poverty. Don't deceive yourself to think, oh, oh, no, most people in the world are in poverty. Yes, there are rich people, but most people in the world are in poverty, even in the West. Even in the West. People live under the bridge, even in some of the wealthiest nations in the world. People are roaming the streets and begging for money and begging for food and, and eating in the dumb. Even, even in the wealthiest nations of the world. Don't look at Africa and think Africa is, the, is a dark continent. To be honest with you, it is not a dark continent. Like I said to you last uh, Sunday, every nation is endowed with the resources that the nation needs to cater for the people of the nation. There is no poor nation. There are only poor people. And the reason you have poor people is because the wealth in the nations are not evenly distributed. That's the only reason. That's the reason. Come on, look at Congo, man. Congo is like the richest nation in the world. Let's just look at Africa particularly. The richest nation in Africa happens to be Congo, the Democratic Republic of Congo, regarding natural mineral resources. Rich with diamond, rich with gold, and rich with na name, name it. But today, the nation is raped and pillaged. People are dying like flies. Two weeks, two, three weeks ago, people are, uh, were killed like flies. And it's been happening for years now. Why do you think it's in the condition that it's in? Why do you think it's in the condition that, that it's in? Because the devil has come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. It is the devil that's come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And then you talk about prosperity in the church, and people get upset. Why preach prosperity? Why tell people to give? No, we tell people to give because we want them to break out of poverty. That's why we tell them to give. We tell them to sow seed because we don't want people of God operating by the system of the world instead of operating by the system of the kingdom of God. Amen. Can someone shout hallelujah? hallelujah? So the Lord appeared to him and the Lord said to him, don't do it like the world does it. Dwell in this land and I will be with you and I will bless you. For to you and your descendants, I will give all this land and I will perform the oath which I swore to Abraham your father. And I will make your descendants multiply as the stars of heaven. I will give to your descendants all these lands. And in your seed, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. Because Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. And then the Bible says in verse 6, so Isaac dwelt in Gerar. What did Isaac do? We can say in essence, Isaac obeyed God. Is that right? Obedience is the key to blessing in the kingdom of God. Whatever God tells you to do, do it. Remember when, when Jesus turned water into wine? Before it actually happened, Mary had come to the Lord and said, and said to, to Jesus, Can you help them because they ran out of wine? And Jesus said to Mary, Woman, my hour has not come. In other words, leave me alone. <laughs> But you know what Mary did? She obligated Jesus to perform a miracle. Yeah. You, know, you know, you can obligate Jesus to perform a miracle. Yeah. 
You can obligate God to perform a miracle. Amen. The Bible is filled with men and women that obligated God to move in their circumstances. Mary said to, the, said to the young man, whatever he tells you to do, do it. That is the key to miracles. Whatever he tells you to do, do it. Do whatever he says. So this morning as I speak to you, the Holy Ghost will speak to your heart to do something specific. Amen. Whatever he tells you to do, that's what you should do. I've heard the Lord many times tell me what to give. I've heard the Lord many times tell me what to sow. When it comes to the tithe, the Lord does not need to speak to me about that because I already know what to tithe. The Bible says it's 10% of my income. So I don't pray and ask the Lord, what, how much should I tithe? Because I know how much I make. And so if the money comes in, I tithe without even asking any question. Can someone say amen? amen. But after I've tithed 10% of my income, then the 90% will be determined by me and the Lord. The Bible also says, let each one give as he has made up his what? His mind, not out of compulsion or not out of a necessity because God does what? God loves a, a cheerful giver. God loves, the Bible says in the Amplified Version, God loves a cheerful, prompt to do it giver whose heart is in his giving. Prompt to obey. Obedience is the key to blessing. The Lord came to Isaac and said, stay where I tell you. And uh, don't move from here. Don't go to Egypt. Don't do it like the world does it. And the Bible says, Isaac obeyed God. Tell your neighbor, obey God. Because that's the key. That's the key. Come on, that's the key. That's the key. A lot of times people pray and pray and pray. And they walk out of their prayer room without hearing the voice of God. Because the voice of God is the answer to the prayer. And a lot of times after you have prayed, the Lord will tell you what to give for the miracle to happen. Oh, I see. Just want that to sink in a little bit. After you have prayed, the Lord will say, give this or give that or do this or do that. He doesn't send an angel to your door. Amen. No, he doesn't send an angel to your door. Praise God. Amen. Amen. He doesn't send an angel to your door. He sends people or he sends you to people. Praise the Lord. He tells you what to give. He tells you what to do. In obeying the voice of God, you see the blessing. Abraham's blessings are mine. Abraham's Blessings are mine. I am blessed. In the morning, I am blessed. Abraham's blessings are mine. My God, we sing that song and wriggle our waist and dance and sweat. But I think we need to start singing about Abraham's obedience. Abraham's obedience is mine. Abraham's obedience is mine. I obey in the morning. I obey in the noonday. Abraham's obedience is mine. No, I tell you, people sing Abraham's blessings, Abraham's blessings, and my God, the band is playing and everyone is dancing. But understand that Abraham did not just receive the blessing without obeying God. God said to him in Genesis chapter 12, leave your father's house, leave your country, and go to a place that I'll show you. And the Bible says, Abraham got up and left and obeyed God. He was looking for a city. He didn't even know where he was going to. God did not tell him, go to this particular. God said, just get up and go. And he got up and he went. And God began to lead Abraham because he had taken the step of faith and the step of obedience in the right direction. What is obedience? Obedience is listening to the voice of God and doing only what God tells you to do. That's what obedience is. That's when you see heaven released. That is when you see the hand of God move. That is when you see the favor of God released. That is when you experience a breakthrough. Too much singing, but, but no obedience. <laughs> it's time to obey. It's time to say, Lord, what would thou have me do? Lord, what would you have me give? Lord, who would you want me bless? Lord, what do you want me to, to, to do? Lord, where do you want me to go to? It is in obeying God that you see 
the hand of God move mightily upon your life. Can someone say amen? amen? Show me one man. Show me one woman who was blessed mightily in the word. I show you a man and a woman who obeyed God. Who obeyed God to the letter. Who listened to the voice of God and did exactly what God told them to do. That's how to be blessed. Can someone say amen? amen? So the Lord came to Isaac. He said, do not go to Egypt. Do not do it like the world does it. Stay where I tell you. And Isaac stayed in the place where God told him to stay. That is the key to receiving the blessing of God. Amen. Even Jesus himself obeyed God. Did you know that? He was in the garden of Gethsemane. And he knew that what he was about to go through was going to be so tough. It was going to be very painful. He was going to carry the sin of the world upon his shoulders. He was going to be beaten. They would rip his beards and they would put a crown of thorns on his head. They would push it down into his scalp and it would pierce into his skull. And he knew what he was to go through. They would nail his hands and his feet. They would pierce his side. All his blood would run out of his body. He knew what he was about to go through. So in the Garden of Gethsemane, projecting into what was about to happen, he said, Father, let this cup pass over me. Nevertheless, not my will, but let your will be done. Total submission to the will of God blessing. Total obedience to the will of God is the key to blessing. God can tell you to do this and you're doing the other thing. God can tell you to give this and you're giving something less than what God tells you to give and expect God to bless you. Are you listening to me? And so the Bible says that Isaac stayed in Jerah. Isaac dwelt in Jerah. Can someone say amen? amen? I want you to go with me Go down to verse. Praise the Lord. Is this helping anybody? Look at verse 12. It says, Then Isaac sold in that land. Tell your neighbor, Isaac sold. This is the way of the kingdom of God, sowing and reaping. And Isaac sowed in that land and reaped in the same year a hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. Isaac stayed in that land, and Isaac sowed, and the Lord did what? Yes. Blessed him. Isaac stayed in that land, Isaac sowed in that land, and who blessed him? The Lord, the Lord blessed him. See now. He stayed... But that was not enough. He sowed. He gave. He put seed in the ground. <laughs> Amen. Amen. It's not enough to just obey. In staying in the place where God tells you to stay, you've got to also sow seeds. Mm. Sowing seed is giving God something to walk with. Someone says, well, I, what are you talking about? You mean you give God something to walk with? Well, let's look at what happened when Jesus fed the 5,000. Right? He said, these people have been with me all this time. I need to feed them. Is that right? And he asked the disciples, what do you have? The disciples said, Lord, even if we have this much food, it wouldn't cater for the people. We know the count of the people in the place. 5,000 men apart from women and children. Now, if you know anything about big families, I come from one. Seven of us. Our parents gave birth to seven. Mm. Five men, two women. In Africa, we believe in big families. In the Middle East, big families. In America, my God. <laughs> Big families. It's Europe now that's suffering. You go to Europe now, people, no, no, no. I don't want a child, I don't want a baby. People, people, people planning to get married, they're talking about, do you want to have kids? Are you, are you serious? <laughs> what nonsense? Are we going to have kids? Yes, of course. <laughs> How do you mean ever we're going to have kids? Are you asking me that question? Now we should be talking about how many. <laughs> Not if we will have any. Praise God. 
If you come sit under me during our marriage counseling, we're not, we're not going to be talking about are you going to have kids. We're going to be talking about how many kids are you going to have. <laughs> and after you get married and I, I look at you, it's five months, six months, one year, no baby. I say, what's going on? I begin to get involved. We have to do a second marriage counseling. <laughs> So what is, uh, what is uh, are we going to have children? No, Europe is suffering right now because they're not, they're not having kids. People would rather live in a house with a cat <laughs> than have children. The puppy is our kid. Are you serious? People are messed up in their heads. I'm telling you, people are messed up in their heads. Come on now. You're going to tell an African man, do you want children? <laughs> Not that I'm in support of this, but some wives are driven away from their husband's house because they can't have children. Are you listening to me? We believe in big families. Go into the world and multiply. <laughs> I have a friend, <laughs> a friend of mine. He has three. He has like uh, two, three, two, three sets of twins. Wow. Oh yeah, I kid you not. Very good friend of mine. About three sets of twins. <laughs> I said, "Hey man, what's going on?" It said to me, "The Bible says going to the world and multiply." <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> it, it's, it's challenging when they are young, but when they start growing up, it's a blessing. It's a blessing. Where my children are running all over the place. Amen. Growing up, I, I, we used to play hide and seek. Who do you play hide and seek with? My brothers, of course, and my sisters. Amen. But back then also, there was a lot of weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. Because <laughs> before you knew it, <laughs> you get a punch from the big ones. <laughs> but it's fun. Now we can look back and say, wow, we had a great time with my siblings. Amen. Amen. And, and the, the family unit is so important. My God, we have a strong... In my family, we have a very strong family bond, very strong. Still in touch with all my siblings, all of them. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. So think about this. I mean, 5,000 men apart from women and children. And look at the, uh, the Jewish uh, families. The big, huge, like ours. So if you have 5,000 men apart from women and children, now my question is, when you add the men and the uh, women and children, how many were there? Huh? So we're talking about a stadium packed with people. But how did Jesus feed them? Jesus said, what do you have in your hands? Why did Jesus not just bring something out from nowhere? Pardon? Why did Jesus not, bread, come. Fish, come. No, that's not what he did. Is that what he did? He said, what do you have? Bring me what you have. In other words, you put into his hands what he multiplies. Amen. Are you listening to me? Amen. This is the key in the kingdom of God. They said, Master, we have a little boy here. He has five loaves of bread and two fish. He said, bring it to me. Bring what? Five loaves of bread and two fish. Bring it to me. Bring what? Five bakeries and two whales. No, that's not what it says. Five loaves of bread and two little fish. Remember, it was a little boy's lunch. It was not two big whales, not two big bake, not five bakeries. It was five loaves of small bread and two small fish. But when you put your little in the hands of Jesus, he multiplies it. When you put your little in the hands of Jesus, he'll use it to feed 20,000 people. Amen. When you put your little in the hands of Jesus, he'll use it to feed a city. Amen. Can someone say amen? amen? So as we give today, understanding that we're sowing 
into the kingdom of God and we're putting our seeds and our tithes into the hands of the head of the church. And as we do that in faith, understanding that he will use that which we offer him to feed the nations. Can someone say amen? amen. And what happens in turn? He increases your seed. Your harvest will come back to you. You will reap maximum harvest when you sow in faith. You will reap maximum harvest when you give with a heart of love. Amen. Can someone say amen? amen? So the Bible says, And Isaac sowed in the same year, he reaped a hundredfold. Well, what's a hundredfold in math? A hundredfold is 10,000%. That was a 10,000. A hundredfold. 10,000%. So in one year, the guy reaped 10,000% increase on seeds that he sowed in a land of drought. Now, don't miss that now, because what a lot of people are trying to do today, I, I see some videos today, and I see some people making some stupid videos trying to take away the supernatural from the things of God. You cannot take away the supernatural from God. You cannot take away the supernatural from the church. A lot of people are trying to teach us today that, well, if you want to increase, you've got to just go to school. You've got to be a hard worker. I believe in going to school. I believe in being a hard worker, but I'm a child of God too. And so the supernatural factor must not be taken away. Are you listening to me? Because there are many people that have gone through university. Some have two PhDs, yet they can't put food on the table. Are you listening now? Don't take away the supernatural. There is a supernatural when it comes to dealing with God. Amen. Jesus said to Peter, go to the stream and the first fish you catch, open his mouth and you'll find money in it. That's the supernatural. Don't ever take away the supernatural. Don't listen to these people who are coming up now these days and trying to tell us that you just have to work hard and be a good person and, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, be the best at what you do. I truly believe in being the best at what you do. But don't ever take the supernatural away. But you can be the best at what you do does not guarantee that you will succeed the rest of your life. When the economic crisis hit in 2007, some people lost their millions overnight. They were very smart people. Yet they lost it. Are you listening to me? Don't ever take the supernatural away. The Bible tells us that in the land where Isaac sowed the seed was a land of famine, was a land of drought. Seeds don't grow in places like that. But God said, I'll be with you. Amen. Even though the natural is not pleasurable, the supernatural will overcome whatever the natural circumstance is. And I believe there are some of you here this morning, you need the supernatural to overcome the natural circumstances for you. Amen. You need the supernatural to step in. Amen. When the supernatural steps in, the natural will give way. Amen. Come on now. Don't take away the supernatural. Don't rob the church of the supernatural power of God. Don't rob the church of miracles. He said, don't believe in miracles. Don't believe in breakthroughs. No, I believe in miracles. I believe in breakthroughs. I do. I do. If you serve God, there are miracles, there are breakthroughs. Praise the Lord. You give in faith. You expect God to bless you. And God will increase you. He does increase people. Amen. He'll pick you up from nobody and make you somebody. He goes before you and makes the crooked places straight. He breaks in pieces. The gates are brass. He cuts asunder the bars of iron. He gives unto you the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places. He opens to you the two leaf gates and the gates will not be shut. He will, un he will lose the loins of kings to bless you and to favor you. Come on now. Don't take the supernatural away from God's people. The supernatural is still there. Can someone shout hallelujah? Come on, someone said the supernatural. supernatural. Very important. Don't take it away from God's people. We must be a supernatural church. Amen. Amen. You have to be a supernatural believer. That's the only way you overcome this, the problems out there. Praise God. Hallelujah. You can't be thinking natural. You can't be operating natural and expect to overcome in the natural. Because like I said to you, most people in the world are in abject poverty. Forget the nation they're living in. I really don't care about the nation that they're living in because the nations are raped and pillaged. The nations are robbed. Even as you and I are speaking right now, most nations, if not all the nations of the world, are robbed and pillaged right now. Are you listening to me? 
The other day I was talking to Pastor, Pastor Matteo in Italy, and we were just talking about, I said, look, man, he was just sharing with me some of the things that, 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 that the people in, the, in Italy are going through, even the taxation. I looked at him. We're sitting at breakfast. I said, Pastor Matteo, you guys are, I, mean, I, I didn't mean it in a <laughs> disrespectful way, and I wasn't referring to him, but I was referring to the people in the nation. I said, you guys are very poor. That's what I told him. We're sitting at table, breakfast. I said, you guys are very poor. When he was telling me the taxation, tax this and tax that, tax for this, and I mean, it's crazy. I said, what? People suffer. I said, you guys are very poor. I've got news for you. Don't think of going to Italy. No. <laughs> <laughs> Except the Lord leads you there. Because where God leads, He provides. Amen. I say, where God leads, He provides. Amen. When God guides, He provides. Amen. God will not order something and not pay for it. Amen. Amen. God won't tell you to go eat in a restaurant and tell you to walk out of the restaurant without paying. <laughs> Amen. God will <laughs> Amen. God pays for what He orders for. So if God has ordered for that thing you're doing, God's going to pay for it. But my friend, if you order for it, you better pay. <laughs> Amen. Amen. If you order for it, you will pay. But if God ordered for it, God's going to pay. That's why we have to trust the Lord and do only that which God tells us to do. And God will take care of us. Amen. Can someone say amen? amen. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. hallelujah. I said hallelujah. hallelujah. People go walk like dog. Walk like a dog. A pastor friend was telling us the other time, it's in Germany, he said, he said uh, most people walk two, three jobs. That's why he told me, he said they walk two, three jobs, just to survive. Just to survive. And, and people walk two, three jobs just to survive, not to have extra. I want to say to survive. God has not called you to survive. But has called you to live in plenty. Amen. You don't, if you don't like this message, just don't watch me. <laughs> don't watch it. God has called you to live in plenty. If you don't like it, then you, you can turn off your computer. But God has called the church to live in plenty. Amen. 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 And, and, and I, I did not come up with the idea of prosperity. Today, people are criticized for, for preaching prosper, prosperity. Prosperity preachers are that. Listen, it's not a problem of prosperity. It's never a problem of prosperity. Like I've been emphasizing lately, it's a problem with the usage. If the ministry is not using the money well, then it's a problem. But also, if the people in the body of Christ, the believers in the church, are not also using their money well, then that's a problem. Are you listening to me? Don't blame God. Don't blame the word. Because when God made Adam, God did not, like Pastor Corey told us last week, God did not create Adam and then say, oh, I forgot to give him a house. <laughs> oh, I forgot to build something nice for him. Okay, Adam, go to Talabashe. <laughs> TBS. Did God, did, did God create Adam and put him in a little shack? Is that what God did? No. No. Go look, at, go look at the Garden of Eden. Go look at the Garden of Eden. The Bible says that the gold and the land were good gold. There was onyx stone in the land. It was such a wealthy place. Even the Garden Eden itself means pleasure. So God took the man and put him in the Garden of what? Pleasure. Come on now. So prosperity is not my idea. Prosperity is not your idea. Prosperity is no man's idea. Prosperity is God's idea. Amen. It's the devil that has come to rob. The poverty we see today was caused by the devil, not from God. Poverty does not come from God. People live under the bridge and people feed from, feed from, a, from dustbin. That's not from God. People not having clothes to wear, that's not from God. Amen. Amen. And if everybody is quiet about this, then the devil will have his way. That's why we have to shout this thing on the mountaintop. 
that God wants you blessed. Yes. God said to Abraham, I'll bless you and I'll make you a blessing. Amen. Can I tell you this morning that God says he will bless you Amen. and he'll make you a blessing. Amen. He does not just bless you so that you live in a big house. That is fine. That you drive a nice car. That is fine. That you wear nice clothes. That is fine. But he wants you to be a blessing to other people. To be a blessing to the kingdom of God. To be a blessing to the nations. Come on now. But the devil don't want us to be, to be, to be blessed. The devil wants us living under the curse. God forbid I don't live under the curse. You can't curse the man that God has blessed. And I believe everyone here has been blessed by God. And no curse over your life. In Jesus' mighty name. You will increase. You will prosper. You will go up. You will never go down. You will spread to the left and the right. Praise the Lord. You succeed. Whatever you put your hand upon to do will prosper and come to maturity. You will be a blessing not just to your family but even to your neighbors. You'll be a blessing not just to your family. Even to your village. Even to your city. Even to your nation. You will be a blessing to them. Yes. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No. Shut up and stay in your little corner. You Christians, stay there. You're not supposed to have anything. That's a lie from the devil. Shut up and you walk a job. You walk a job all your life. You earn nothing. Suffer all your life. You... You don't deserve anything good. You're like a worm. You crawl on your belly the rest of your life. No. That's not God's word. God says you are the head, not the tail. Amen. Above and not beneath. Amen. The light of the world. The salt of the earth. Amen. A light that will not be put under the bushel, but on top of the table. And it will give light to everyone that comes into the room. Can someone shout hallelujah? hallelujah. Can someone shout hallelujah? hallelujah? I'm telling you, this is going to be your best year ever. This, this is your best, this is your best year ever. Your best, your best year ever. Let the devil get upset all he wants. You're going to prosper financially. Let the devil get upset all he wants. You're going to buy new houses. Let the devil get upset all he wants. You're going to get a new car. Let, let the devil get upset all he wants. You're going to get that education that you have applied for. Let, let the devil get upset all he wants. You're going to increase and you're going to be a blessing. Amen. You're going to be a blessing. You're going to bless many. Amen. You're going to buy houses for people. Amen. I'm just upset with the devil right now. You are, you are going to buy houses for people. You're, you're, going to buy, you're going to buy vehicles for people. You're going to help people open up new businesses. Let, let the devil get upset all he wants. You will do it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Come on now. Come on, give him glory in the house this, this, this morning. Give him praise. Give him glory. Hallelujah. Pastor, Pastor, the economy is bad. I don't care. My Bible does not say God will bless me according to the economy of the nation. It says God will bless me according to his riches and glory. According to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. I'm a seed sower. I'm a giver. I'm ready. Yeah. My God. The Lord showed me a vision last week and I was telling the church. The Lord showed me that there is something big about to be unleashed upon this church. Yeah. And in the vision I heard Pastor Corey as he was stirring the people up and with, the, with a sense of urgency. Urgency in his voice as he was speaking to the people about what is coming. Something big is about to happen. Something big is about to come. And I looked at the people in the vision. A lot of people were not ready. I looked at Pastor Corey. I said to him, Pastor Corey, when this thing is unleashed, I'll be right in the middle of it because I've been preparing for it. Amen. I've been preparing for this stuff. And it's about to happen. It's about to come upon us. And I'm here to also get you ready because something big is about to come upon this church, upon this ministry, upon your life. If you believe it, give the Lord a big shout of praise. I'm telling you, it's time to get ready. It's time to get ready. Get ready because something big is about to be unleashed. Something big is about to be poured out. Something big, something we've never known, something we've never seen is about to come. Hallelujah. Hey, glory to God. 
It's about to happen. It's about to happen. Don't get upset with me. Don't get upset with me. I'm living in the promised land. Don't get upset. Don't, if your neighbors get upset, that's their cup of tea. And they can, they can drink that tea all they want. But you are going to stay in the blessing of God. You are go, you're going to increase. You're going to, you're going to serve the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Mark, the crazy devil wants us to feed from hand to mouth. Scrape the bottom of the barrel. Beg everybody for money. Enough of that in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Enough of that nonsense. We're not to beg. Bible says you lend to many nations, you will not borrow. Huh? Yeah, you can sow. Of course. <laughs> it wants to sow his seed. <laughs> Bless you. It's sowing his seed. Amen. You lend to many nations, you will not borrow. It, he asked me, can I sow? Yes, you can sow. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You can sow. You can sow a seed. Don't even wait for me to tell you to sow a seed. Amen. Let the Holy Ghost tell you to sow a seed. Amen. 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 Don't wait for me to tell you to sow a seed. Sow your seed. Sow your seed in faith. And this is really not, don't bother about the envelopes right now. That's actually going to disturb. Don't bother about the envelopes. Until I tell you to give the envelopes, don't even do it. If people are being led by the Holy Ghost to put their offerings right here, let them come up and do it. And, uh, and the Lord might even tell you to give something to someone sitting beside you. Amen. Amen. So, so don't, don't bother about envelopes right now. Forget about envelopes. No, no, leave that. Just leave everything. Leave everything. Just let people follow the Lord. Amen. Amen. I'll tell you what to do when, if we need to do that. But right now, it does not seem like we need to do it. And people are coming up to bless the Lord. Let them do it. I'm just going to step away. Thank you, Jesus. It's time for this church to increase. It's time to raise up, it's time to raise up people. People that will, will control large resources. Large resources. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. It's en I say enough is enough. Amen. I say enough is enough. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you. Then Isaac sowed in that land, and he reaped in the same year a hundredfold. One hundredfold. One hundred. One hundredfold. Do you want to bless? <laughs> Amen. One hundredfold. One hundredfold. No, don't worry. Mind your business. <laughs> one one, one, one hundredfold. 10,000% was what he reaped. 10,000. Amen. Amen. So I see increase coming. Amen. I see increase coming. Amen. I see prosperity. Amen. I see increase. Amen. I, see, I see people being raised up. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. I see people being raised up. I see people, people stop eating from hand to mouth. I see people stop scraping the bottom of the barrel. I see people rising up financially. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. The, the thing you've been dreaming about, I, I, in Jesus' name I declare, that it is the season for it to come. Amen. It is the season for it to manifest. It is the season for it to come to fruition. Amen. It is the right season. You've come into this season, and this season is the right season where God wants you to excel in everything that has cost you to lay your hands upon to do. Amen. Can someone give Him praise and glory in the house this morning? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I said, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Ha. Hundredfold. Ten thousand percent he was blessed. And the Lord blessed him, and the man began to prosper. Somebody's going to begin to prosper. Amen. <laughs> you know, that's always the beginning. Some people have never tasted prosperity, but you're going to start. Oh, Jesus. I said, some people have never tasted prosperity, but you are going to start. Amen. The man began, that one say he began, began. To, prosper. to prosper. I like that. And then the Bible says, the man went to the next level, he continued prospering. You know, it's one thing to begin, it's another thing to sustain it. Some people start, but they, they can't sustain it. 
but God's going to help you sustain it. When you begin to prosper, God is going to make sure that you continue prospering. And as long as you keep sowing your seed, and as long as you keep serving the Lord, as long as you stay faithful to the Lord, you will continue to prosper. Amen. The Bible does not say you will retrogress. The Bible says you will progress. The Bible does not say you will go backward. The Bible says you will go forward. He continued to prosper until he became very prosperous. Amen. Amen. He became so prosperous. Father, we thank you today. We give you honor, praise, and glory. Thank you for your people. Thank you for your church. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have a great, awesome plan for each person in this place today and those watching by way of the internet. Thank you, Lord, for all that you have done in this church. But Lord, we thank you for all that you're about to unleash upon us, all you're about to release upon us. Father, by faith, we plug into this. By faith, we, we, we connect to your plan. By faith, we connect. And Lord, we sow our seeds in faith. And we know, Lord, that we don't just give one time. We continually give because we are sowers of seed. And Lord, I thank you because you're going to bring maximum harvest to each of us as we keep sowing our seed. I declare that lack is removed in Jesus' name. I declare the spirit of poverty is removed from your people in the mighty name of Jesus. Because Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law. And one of the curse of the law is poverty. Therefore, poverty is not upon us. Lord, I declare that this church is increasing. This church is blessed. Your people are increasing. Businesses are blessed. Families are blessed. Homes are healed. Homes are blessed. Bodies are healed in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that I should speak for your people right now about what you have them do. Father, I declare that we obey you and we do exactly what you tell us. And Lord, I thank you that we give in faith and we believe for maximum return. In Jesus' mighty name. And everyone say, amen, amen. 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 Well, give the Lord glory. Give the Lord praise. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to have the ushers please stand now with the offering envelopes. For those that will want to pick up an envelope to bring your tithe and your offering, just lift your hand and the ushers are going to get envelopes across to you. Thank you, Jesus. You're watching online, you can sow by way of a debit and a credit card. Click, click on donation and you are going to be guided on what to do and uh, how to give. So keep the offering envelopes up. For those that want envelopes, lift your hands and the ushers will get, get you an envelope. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. God bless. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Give me an envelope, please. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Keep standing with those envelopes, please. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be your name. 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 Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord. 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 Can I get a pen, please? Is everyone ready to give? Let's put the basket up here in the front and one in the aisle. And once you're ready, you can come up and let's all worship the Lord together. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's have our worship team come up and do that new song, please. Blessed be your name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus.
Now, like I, like I announced earlier in the service, when the service is over, we're going to shut down the broadcast, of course, of course, and then we will ask everyone here to please stay back because there are a few things that I would like for us to do before I let you go, okay? So please do not leave when the service is over. There are a few things that I want us to do before we let you go. Amen? Let's all stand. And the fear that held me I refuse to agree With the lies they told me I take out my position Speak to all my conditions Take the authority you want for me The word of the Lord Prophesy.
You say, what do you prophesy? <laughs> turn, turn to one person and prophesy over them right now. Just speak something. Speak something over them. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. It's okay. Someone say, but, but I'm not a prophet. You don't have to be a prophet. You, you just have to be a child of God to prophesy. Amen. You have to be a child of God to prophesy. You can actually, you can actually open the word and prophesy the word over your life. Amen. Go ahead and take your seat. Amen. We come to the table of the Lord and then uh, very soon we shall all partake at the table. And then uh, I have a few things, like I said, that I want us to do before we let you go. The Bible says in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 10, speaking on the Lord's table from verse 16. Paul writing, he says, the cup of blessing which we bless. I like the fact that Paul calls this the cup of blessing. Everyone say, the cup of blessing. Cup of blessing. Now, it's not a cup of cursing, but a cup of blessing. Everything that Jesus did at Calvary was designed to bless us. The price Jesus paid was for our blessing. The curse was upon us, but the blessing came and removed the curse. Amen. Amen. So this is the cup of blessing, not a cup of cursing. And, and the devil knows that this is a cup of blessing. And the devil, the devil has done a lot to stop people from coming to the cup, from coming to the table. And one of the ways the devil has stopped people from coming to the table is through religious doctrine. Someone told me some time ago, he, he, he said to me, Pastor... We were told that until you are baptized in water, you, can, you cannot take communion. See, that's a wrong doctrine. That's a very wrong doctrine. Until you are baptized in water, you cannot take communion. Who said that? That's the doctrine of devils. That's not from God. Are you listening now? Because nowhere in the word of God it says you must be baptized first before you come to the table of your father. Nowhere. This is the Lord's table. See, it's, it's the Lord's table. It's the Lord's table. It is the table of the Lord. It's the table of blessing. And because the devil knows that if you partake at the table, you can be healed in your body. So he would rather have you sick than be healed, of course. Is that right? There is healing at the table. There is blessing at the table. There is, uh, there is deliverance at the table. Amen. So when we receive this today, we are receiving by faith the life of God. We're receiving by faith the price that Jesus paid. We're receiving by faith the blood. The blood that sets free. The blood that delivers. The blood that protects. And the devil does not want you living under protection. The devil does not want you living in divine health. So through religious indoctrination, many have been told that they shouldn't come to the table. And that has hindered them from coming to the table because of wrong doctrine. So Paul says this is a cup of blessing which we bless. Is it not a communion of the blood of Christ? So as we partake today, we are communing with the blood of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. We commune with the blood. And the, 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 the amazing thing about the blood of Jesus is this. Number one, the blood of Jesus <coughs> washes sin away. The blood of Jesus is not like the blood of animals that covered sin under the old covenant, but in the new covenant, the blood of Jesus washes. I want to say washes. washes. The Bible says without the shedding of blood, there is no remission for sin. The word remit is to completely erase. So if you have sin in your life today, the blood of Jesus will completely erase that sin. Praise the Lord. But something else the blood does is the blood protects us. The blood of Jesus does what? Protects us. When I see the blood, I will what? Pass over you. The blood protects. Amen. Amen. The blood washes our sins away. The blood protects us. The blood protects us. 
the blood protects us. You can come under the protection of the blood of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Where no devil can access, where no foe can access. <coughs> Psalm 91 says, He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I'll say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in Him I trust. Praise God. So the blood of Jesus protects us. Amen. Amen. Even in other religion, they, 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 they use blood for protection. They kill, they kill an animal, they take the blood of the animal, they put it, they put it on, uh, on, on the tires or the wheels of their cars for protection. Did you know that? I didn't know that. People depend on all kinds of things to protect them. People depend on talisman and charms to protect them. I saw a man rubbing the blood of an animal on, his, on the wheels of his car, on the tires of his car. Of his car. He bought a new car, so okay, for protection. And you ask yourself the question, the stupid animal couldn't protect itself, how can it protect you? <laughs> 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 you took a knife, you killed the thing, and you take the blood and put it on your car. If it could protect your car, it could have protected himself first. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. See now. <laughs> How can people be so... <laughs> the thing is like, meh, 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 meh. You take it, you kill it. It couldn't protect itself. And you take the blood, put it in your car, and expect the, the blood to protect. It wouldn't protect you. It won't protect. In actual fact, you're going you're gonna to die quick. No, really. <laughs> honestly. Because you have, you, have, you, have, you, have unleashed, you have unleashed the demonic. You have unleashed the demonic. We've got to understand that things that we practice will either release the glory of God or release the realm of the demonic. Are you listening to me? You have released the realm of the demonic... And when the demonic is released, my God, there's going to be a lot of trouble. So by faith, we unleashed, we unleash protection from heaven. As we partake of the blood today, and as we partake of the, uh, the bread, the body. Everyone said the body. the body. The bread is symbolic to the body. Jesus said, I'm the bread that came from heaven. Is that right? And he took the bread and he broke the bread and he gave to his disciples and said to them, eat, for this is my body. This is my body. Take and eat, this is my body. Now we understand that the body of Christ is the church. Is that right? And Jesus is what? The head of the church. But we are the body of the, of, of, of the head. Now what does that imply? That also implies that if the head has authority, the body has authority. That implies that if the head is free from sickness, from disease, from bondage, from infirmity, it means the body is free. Oh, you're sleeping. <laughs> is Jesus in bondage? No. Is Jesus sick? No. Then you don't have to be sick. Does Jesus have authority? Yes. Then you have authority. Yes. Does Jesus run from demons? Now, why do some of you call people at night? Oh, no. <laughs> They're after me. <laughs> From my village. <laughs> now, so if Jesus, if the head is in authority, it means the body is in authority. Right? As I can see this afternoon... That your head and your body are sitting on one seat. <laughs> no, if, if someone comes in and sees his head sitting here and his body here, then you know there's a big problem, right? His head is here, his body is here. You know there's a problem. But his body is sitting right with his head. Now, the Bible says Jesus is the head of the church. And where is he sitting today? At the right hand of the Father in glory. 
So if Jesus, the head of the church, is sitting at the right hand of the Father in glory, a place of dominion, a place of authority, then it also means the body, you and I, are sitting in the same place where Jesus is sitting. In the heavenly places, in Christ, by the right hand of the Father, a place of authority, a place of riches, a place of glory, a place of dominion. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say to me, I'm a member of the body of Christ. Christ. Yes. 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 (laughs) Whether you are the leg, whether you are the toes, whether you are are the hand, or whether you are the nose, or the eyes, you are a member. Amen. 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 And where the head is sitting, that's where you are. Praise the Lord. And the same authority the head has is the same authority that you have. Praise God. I like that. I like that. I have the same authority as Jesus. Yes. Yes, my friend. You do. You do. You're you're, you're a child of God. You have the same authority like Jesus. That's why we tell devils, come out. And they come out. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Same authority. Same authority. Not a different authority. Same authority. Same dominion. Amen. In actual fact, Jesus says, I'm your senior brother. Did you know that? He's the firstborn amongst many brethren. (laughs) Firstborn. Firstborn. He's the firstborn. Amen. Is he your brother? Praise the Lord. So today as we partake, we pray that uh, all the blessing at the table will be released upon your life. Amen. Lord, I thank you that the table is blessed. And Lord, we approach the table today as we approach you. Because this is your table. It's not my table. It's not the table of any man here. It's your table. And Lord, you've invited everyone to the table. Lord, the table is open to everyone that's your child. And so we come today in faith, and as we partake at the table, I thank you, Lord, that your healing power is released. Everyone that's sick in their body will be healed today. Amen. Anyone that is tormented in their minds will be set free by reason of the blood of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Amen. I thank you, Lord, that no one will leave this place bound. I thank you, Lord, that homes shall come together. I thank you that marriages will be healed. Amen. I thank you that bodies will be restored. Amen. I thank you, Lord, that vision will be released upon your people. I thank you, Lord, for purpose and direction shall be released upon your people today. I thank you, Lord, that everything you know you shall reveal unto them. I thank you, Lord, that they understand their place of authority from this day onwards. That, Lord, they are not running here, running there, trying to make things happen. But, Lord, they know that they are men and women of authority because they are members of your body. Lord, I thank you for the grace that's released upon this place today upon your people. With every head bowed, every eyes closed, before we come to the table of the Lord, the Bible says if we, if we judge ourselves, we shall not be judged. But if we do not judge ourselves, then God will judge us. So I want to encourage you today, if you do not know the Lord, if you have never, never given your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ, today you have the opportunity to do so. My dear friend, I want to ask you a question. If you died right now, are you sure you go to heaven? Can I tell you that hell was not made for you? Hell was made for Satan and the falling angels. So I want to encourage you to come to know Jesus today. He is the only way to heaven. He is the only way to the Father. Jesus said, I'm the way, I'm the truth, I am the life. No man cometh to the Father except through me. Every other one that has come, they are thieves. I am the door to the sheep. So today he calls you to come home. Or you've come into this place, you served the Lord once upon a time, but you have walked away from Him. You are no more where you used to be. And today your heart is so cold, your heart is so lukewarm, but you know, and yet you come to church and you say, well, I'm a religious person, but well, you are not going to go to heaven because you're religious. You go to heaven because you have a relationship with Jesus Christ and He has washed away all your sin. Or you've come into this place, your heart is telling you one thing, your mind is telling you the opposite. You do not know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you are a child of God. You put your head on your pillow to sleep at night and there is this question in your mind. Are you sure you go to heaven if you do not wake up the next day? 
My dear friend, I want you to understand that Jesus loves you. And that's the reason why he came and died on the cross of Calvary for your sin. And if you will receive Jesus into your heart today, if you will confess him as Lord and Savior, he will forgive you. If you're coming to this place and you want to accept him today, or you want to return back to him today, or you want to make sure of your salvation, I want you to quickly lift up your hand because I want to pray for you and I want to pray with you. Is there anybody? Quickly, quickly, to come to know Jesus today. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Don't hesitate, don't hesitate. Please, don't hesitate. You may not see the next day. Don't hesitate, don't hesitate, don't hesitate, don't hesitate. Don't hesitate, don't hesitate. Just lift your hand, say, I want to receive the Lord Jesus today. Thank you very much. Is there any other person? I want to come back to Jesus. I want to make sure of my salvation. Is there any other person? Thank you so much. You can all look at me with every head lifted. You can all look at me. Well, I saw one hand. Can you please stand? Make your way up to the front. Is there any other person that would like me to pray for him or her? You want me to pray for you? You have not given your heart to Jesus, but you know you should. Or you gave your life to Jesus in the past, but you have not been walking with him in a while now, but you know that you need to come back. You're like the prodigal son, and you want to return back to Jesus. If that is you, you can come and join him, and I'm going to pray for you. Come on. Any other person? Any other person? Awesome. Well, great decision. Lift your right hand to heaven. Your help comes from Jesus. Just lift up your right hand. And I want you to close your eyes, please. I want you to pray this prayer with me. I want you to say, Jesus, come into my heart. I believe you are the Son of God. Forgive me all my sin. Wash me and cleanse me. I don't want to be the same again. I don't want to be the same again, never again. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, you love me. That you're my Savior. That you're my Savior. And my Lord. And my Lord. I believe it. I believe it. I confess it. I confess it. And I receive Jesus. And I receive it. I receive Jesus. I receive Jesus. Right now. Right now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Now look at me. As a servant of the Most High God, based on the confession of your mouth and based on the authority of the Word of God, I want to tell you that all your sins are forgiven you right now. Oh, my God. Amen. <laughs> Amen. He said, oh, my God. Lift up your hands. So G let's lift your hands. I want to pray for you. Stretch your hands towards him. Father, I thank you, Lord, for what you're doing. But I declare freedom over this man right now in Jesus' mighty name. I pray you set him free. <laughs> set him free. Set him free. In Jesus' name. Thank you. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Hallelujah. We have the bread uh, and, and a cup of grape juice. Please, um, when, you, when you take a bread and a cup of grape juice, please wait for my instruction. We are all going to partake together. I have mine. We're all going to partake at the same time. So wait for me. Wait for my instruction. And uh, we shall all partake together. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord is good. Just believe. Believe for healing in your body if you're sick. Look, don't, don't, don't dwell on what the doctor told you. 
Okay? My question to you this morning is, whose report will you believe? Let's believe the Lord's report. The Bible says that by his stripes you were healed. Believe for healing in your body. Don't, don't, don't dwell on what the doctor, t- doctor said. They say it's terminal disease. Well, the Lord existed before that disease. Yeah. Amen. He has no right to stay in your body. Like I told you today, Jesus sits in a place of authority. Jesus sits in a place of liberty. Jesus sits in a place of freedom. But why should you be bound? Jesus is not bound. Jesus is not sick. And as a member of his body, you do not have to be sick. He took your sickness and nailed it to the cross of Calvary. So it is illegal for sickness to stay in your body. Totally illegal. So any sickness in your body is trespassing. And we, as the body of Christ here on this side of of the world, has the right to tell that sickness to go. We have the authority to say, sickness, leave our bodies in Jesus' name. And sickness must must have to go in Jesus' name. So we have to do this in faith. We've got to stay in faith. Enough is enough. We don't want people sick. We don't want people to die young. With long life, I'll satisfy you and show you my salvation. That's what God says. Amen. In so many places, I've called out for those who couldn't sleep at night. Even in Poland, I gave a call for those who couldn't sleep at night. You need to see people. Church people. People come to church, shout hallelujah, praise the Lord, but they can't sleep in the night. Depressed. Tormented. So my question is, is Jesus depressed? Is Jesus tormented? So as a child of God, any torment from the devil shouldn't come on you. The torment of the devil should be on those that serve the devil, not on you who serve Jesus. You have been brought out of the kingdom and control of darkness into the kingdom and control of Jesus. Are you listening to me? So right now we are influenced by the kingdom of God, not the kingdom of darkness. Now everything in the kingdom of darkness are released upon those who are in the kingdom of darkness. And I am not in the kingdom of darkness. You are not in the kingdom of darkness. And guess what? God does not go to the kingdom of darkness and take some things from there to use in his kingdom. Oh, Jesus. Someone say, God, kill that man. God, don't kill people. God does not kill people. God killed them with sickness. God killed them with... No, God don't kill people with sickness. God does not put sickness on people. Well, God put the sickness on him to teach him a lesson. So you're trying to tell me that God went to the kingdom of Satan and said, Satan, can we strike a deal? Can you please lend me your sickness? Let me use it for a while. And I'll give it back to you. Is that what you're saying? Because God does not have sickness to give to anybody. The Bible says in James 1.17, Every good gift, every perfect gift, cometh from The father of lights with whom there is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. God does not give sickness. God does not give poverty. God does not give bondage. God does not give depression. God has no depression to offer you today. God does not give sleepless night. In act of fact, God says your sleep shall be sweet. God does not give depression. God says the joy of the Lord is your strength. God does not give poverty. God has set you free from poverty. How can God give you what he delivered you from? Would I not be speaking from both sides of your mouth? And my God is not a liar. If he has set me free from poverty, then I'm not poor. If he has set me free from sickness, then I'm not sick. If he has delivered me from the bondage of darkness, then I am totally free in Christ. Do you know why the devil gets at people? Number one, ignorance. When you are ignorant of what God has given you and who you are, the devil will mess you up. But when you know that you are the son of a king, no no regular citizen will mistreat you. Because they know that you you operate in the kingdom based on the authority of your father, the king. 
And if they touch you, they touch your dad. <laughs> Ignorance. That's the problem. That's the problem. That's the problem. Number two problem is what? People are yielding to the flesh. One moment under the influence of the kingdom of God. Next moment under the influence of demonic spirits. And if you open the door to demons, they'll mess you up. How do you open the door to devils? Through unbelief. Through fear. Through sin. Are you listening to me? Through strife. Through depression. Are you listening? You open the door to demons. They come. You don't live under the kingdom, but you are now yielding to the influence of that kingdom. And if you yield to the influence of that kingdom, the kingdom will have influence over you. Right? Is that right? Hey. Good. If I have to mention all your different nationalities right now, for those of you who live here, except you're visiting this nation, but you know the moment you left your country and you moved down to Istanbul, you come under the influence of this nation. You can't just go on the street and punch people out. The police will arrest you. You can't tell the police, police, I'm not from Turkey. So what does, what does that mean? So you mean you can come from your country and beat people up here in this country? You come under the influence of this nation when you left your country and came under the influence of this nation. Now you have to learn the rules and regulations. Now you have to learn the constitution. Because in the law there is nothing like ignorance. I, I, I did not know. Yeah. You might spend five years in prison <laughs> to learn. No, I'm just telling you. Is this true? Is this true? So we live in a different kingdom. It's called the kingdom of God. Where the blessing of God is upon us. Where liberty is. Where freedom is. Where divine health is. Where the healing power of God walks. Can someone say amen? amen. That's the kingdom we are living under. That we operate under this kingdom. But once in a while, people tend to do what? Go out of this and, and get under the influence of demonic, inf demonic kingdoms. And then they get infected. I want to say infected. They inject you. And the virus begins to run through your body. Oh, my body, my head, I can't sleep. Oh, bad dreams in the night. Devils are running after me in the night. <laughs> they want to kill me in the night. Who? I saw this thing. Ah! They look like... Ah! <laughs> I saw this spirit coming after me. I saw this dragon. Yeah, you, you probably, you're probably watching a movie. <laughs> you're probably watching the wrong movie. Anyway, Lord, set your people free today. Amen. There is liberty in this place Amen. from everything that the devil has put upon your people. Amen. Father, today we repent. Amen. We don't want to touch anything that the devil has to offer. Amen. Lord, we stay under your kingdom and under your shelter. And so, Lord, I declare every yoke of the devil over your people is broken right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for strength. Thank you, Lord, for deliverance. Thank you, Lord, for healing. Thank you, Lord, for wisdom. Thank you, Lord, for grace as we partake of the bread and the wine. That our bodies are strong. Our bodies are put together. We are blessed in the city. We are blessed in the field. We are blessed in the country. But I bless this as we partake of this in Jesus' mighty name. This is actually the fruit of the vine. And so, Lord, we receive this grape juice right now. And we receive this bread right now. Thank you, Father, for it's symbolic to the body and the blood of Jesus Christ. We take these now in faith. Take the body and take the bread all at the same time. And be healed, be delivered in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord is good. Mm. Be healed in Jesus' name. Be set free in Jesus' name. Amen. When you put your head on your pillow tonight, you sleep like a baby. Amen. All the worries, all the torment of the devil, they leave you right now in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Everyone that's watched us online, we love you. God bless you. Join us again. We want to see you again on Sunday. Don't forget Wednesday we have our midweek service. Join us online, 7.30 p.m. Praise the Lord. The Lord is good. Amen.